Welcome back. All right, bets should be closed by now, but to explain real quick, guys, we're doing bets on win streaks. So, for example, right now, you guys know that Hero is currently on a one-game win streak. The idea is to try and figure out just how long that will last for. Will he go for two wins, three wins, four wins, or an all-kill, maybe? We don't know, but that's what you're betting for. Anyways... This is game number two, as you can see here on the top right. I'm trying to include an in-game scoreboard. Hopefully this makes it a little bit easier for people to have to take off, or maybe if you're just joining the stream. But it is currently 1-0 in the favor of Team Liquid. That being said, spawning here in the top right corner of the map, looking to even it up for his team. It is my insanity, Cyril. And his opponent, over yonder at the top left, from Team Liquid. Sponsored by HyperX, Razor, Need for Seat, Barracuda, Twitch, and Shiny Things. Ladies and gentlemen, Liquid Hero. I love these Game Heart, uh, these Game Heart stripes. I talked to Penguin, so hopefully, hopefully my Insanity submits theirs soon so they can get one as well. It looks really sleek. And it goes away after the first minute of the game, so it's not even too invasive. Just pretty darn neat. Now, let's talk a little bit about Serral. We just saw Hero win. You know, Heroes want a dream hack, whatever. You, dude, this guy's good, whatever. We don't need to build him up. The thing for Serral, though, is while granted a talented player, and statistically so, again, I can't help but feel there's like this caster burden, this curse they bring, because it's the few times I've cast him or every game he loses in the Acer Team Story Cup, so. Uh, I, this is going to be a tough situation for both players. Sarah, of course, coming from Europe, is now playing on the North American servers. It's the middle ground between the two. Hero, of course, coming from Korea, also playing on the North American server. But regardless of how their ping is going to be, this map is one that's really, let's just call it abusive for both Protoss and Zerg. A lot of this hinges around the potential of that gold base. We've seen a lot of really good games that don't bother taking the gold base till much later on. We've seen some pretty decent games that the gold base is taken at the natural. This time, between Hero and Cyril, I'd be honestly... I would imagine it'd be the third. I, I don't think Hero's gonna go for a fast gold, and I don't think he'll try and overextend either. Some Protoss players actually just elect to take this one because it's much safer going into the mid to late game. As far as what Cyril's gonna do though, you gotta ask yourselves a lot of questions. Like, you know Hero's late game's pretty good. You've seen his macro in multiple tournaments where he just gets to the finals. He can play. There's no question in that. What an annoying probe. Uh, to explain what he's doing real quick too, I guess for the more casual viewer, by spam clicking the minerals, he doesn't actually mine from it, but he, he takes up the slot of mining from it. So these drones, unfortunately, which would normally automatically mine to these close mineral patches, well, not this one, I guess, are being driven away. Serral, of course, if he clicks fast enough, he can just simply counteract this, but this is still a nuisance that he has to deal with. And Hero, well, <laughs> he's succeeding in being a nuisance, that's for sure. Now, there's a Zealot not getting cancelled? Okay. A lot of the times, what you'll end up seeing happen here, guys, is to uh, get that Nexus out a little bit faster. They'll cancel the Zealot and just go straight for that Nexus. You know, not having done so, not exactly the end of the world by any means. Oh, this probe got way too greedy. It stayed way too long. Um, although, though, you know, with the Zealot not getting cancelled, you might actually just save it. Anyways, with the Zealot coming across the map, he, I don't think he's going to be tearing down a, a Nexus, or sorry, rather, a Hatcher anytime soon, and Queens will be out to defend against this. The idea is that you want to just provide a little bit of pressure, make sure that your opponent has to make a couple more links, and he doesn't get away with the simple two that you would normally have for scouting in the early game. This isn't like versus Terran, and Zerg players don't have to worry about getting four to six links out early on. Because a lot of the times we see, it's, it, it, you don't usually have this zealot across the map. In fact, just a shield there for the time being. Get over here just in time for first blood. blood. And Heroes actually can open with a Stargate. Can't tell you guys how much I love this idea. I think Stargates are some of the funnest things Protoss players can do. Phoenixes, in my opinion, in the right hands, example Liquid Heroes, can be fantastically abusive. They can also be incredibly elegant, it depends how you want to use them. I think on this map as well, it's going to come into great play. He'll be able to pick off two overlords at the very least, right off the bat. And we'll see how he transitions after that. Man, there's mineral patches in here? When the map mines out, these should totally open. How cool would that be? I feel like the lemons on Fruitland. Well, I guess maybe not quite the same mechanic, but still neat to see. Uh, he's going to open an oracle though, ooh. This is an interesting choice for a couple of reasons. First off, by going for the oracle, you, you risk getting some kills. Now, that sounds weird to say risk getting some kills, right? An Oracle's a pretty expensive unit you can't throw away. And if you dive in for, say, like, seven drones, chances are the queen kills your Oracle. Alternatively, you can focus down one single queen and then kill a couple of drones afterwards, but either way, the Oracle's got such limited use in the early game. Uh, keeping it alive to re do revelations later on is always a really nice choice. And we had an immediate Void Ray follow-up. Now, if this was anyone else in the world, namely Arthur, 
<laughs> I say I love referencing him. We'd probably see this end up being something really cheesy and all in it, but because it's Hero, I imagine this is just in the prediction of Roaches, which are, in fact, coming out to follow this up. It looks like he's actually going to go for those dive on the drones. Like I said, you can get about four or six, sometimes seven if you're really lucky, uh, before the queens usually pick this off. But as we see, it's getting pretty low, and he's got to be careful. Oh, he's going to actually lose the oracle. That is not going to be good moving forward in this game. An oracle like a medevac is really scary, not because of the damage it actually physically deals, but because of the threat of the damage it could possibly deal. So now he doesn't have to worry about defending so hard. Uh, typically, you don't see a follow-up oracle after the first one fails. Void Ray has been revealed as he cleans up the overlords on this side of the map, and between that and the overcharge, any sort of roach counterattack is really not that scary. Cyril, in the meantime, is spreading creep like a boss. I just want to throw that out there. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't have any connection in the main, but that's not a big deal. A lot of the times, you see a lot of Protoss players kind of skimp on creep spread. It's definitely not as critical as versus, say, Terran, I would say. But creep spread is still a pretty big part of the game. And one of the big things it does is it lets you uh, have vision where overlords normally can't. Like, you can't sit an overlord in the middle of the map. It's going to get killed by a stalker. It's a free death. Uh, Voidray is actually hunting around for the overlord, somewhat similar to that of the... Uh, I guess the Viking you see that odd Terran player make from time to time. I'm not sure if actually uh, going to force a couple cancels on the script humans, but don't didn't actually kill them. Uh, and actually he has to run away. It's getting pretty low. Queen's off of creep. Not the fastest things, but there is creep here ready to go. He's down here to the lower right. We have to get that Void Ray coming in. It's getting pretty greedy. There's a lot of Queens around, and Queens are a lot better at dealing with Void Rays than most units are, ironically enough. Their DPS is high enough that they can do this. They outrange a Void Ray as well, which is really stupid to consider. Seven range versus, I believe, six. Not to mention Transfuses are the best way to beat out a Void Ray. But behind this, here's placed down a lot of sentries. Now, I'm wondering if this is going to be for gateways or not. I mean, he's... Okay, never mind. Actually, the robot just got built. I take that back. Sorry, I didn't see the production there. I was going to say, though, like, you bank up this many centuries, you kind of assume they're going to have an Immortals to follow it up, but the problem is, it was, it's kind of late, so I kind of, I don't know if that'll even be that good of an idea. We already have Hydralists coming out. I mean, these are kind of your counter Immortal Sentry units. They do enough DPS to kill Immortals, and they certainly have the range to shoot over those force fields. And Cyril's gonna get scouted a little bit by this hallucination, but I don't think he minds. It's kind of one of those moments where you're like, surprise, they have Hydralisks. Did you expect anything different in a ZVP? <laughs> Phoenix did get denied before confirming that there was a hive or an infestation pit or anything, but eh, really not that big of a deal. Oh, she's scattered later. I didn't realize later was the natural. I'll take that back. But still, no infestation pit revealed. Uh, is placed down here towards the third. Hero is also taking his own third while this is going on, and I'm not surprised, like I said, we probably weren't going to see gold bases too fast from either of these players. It's one of those safe builds, one of those safer games. I mean, it's only game number two in a best of nine, but every game really counts, and if you end up losing by one game, you regret throwing away game number two. Uh, so, I, 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 again, I like the the safe play for both of these players right now, but the Zlings, unfortunately, couldn't get a lot done. They do confirm the third base, which is nice, but outside of that, not a lot. Meanwhile, Creep Spray continues through the middle of the map, defacing the Acer Team Strike Up logo. Serral, have you no shame? That's okay, I think they'll forgive me. Oh, sorry, <sighs> couldn't fight off that yawn any longer. Uh, one of the big things here, uh, Cool Snipe, is creep spread is sip typically something a Zerg player doesn't have in their favor. And off of creep, even with muscular augments and even with the uh, Gleo reconstitution for the roach speed, Hydras and Roaches have a hard time sort of ducking around those forest fields because you don't have the movement speed to position correctly. But with Creep Spread being, quite frankly, the, the crazy way that it is, he may actually have that huge speed advantage moving forward. Uh, back at home, there are three Zelts in this War Prism, but unfortunately, nothing left at home for Cyril. He's got a couple Hydralis popping out soon, but really not a lot. Goes to town immediately. Uh, Phoenix is kind of caused the false alarm, but... Oh, if he force fields that ramp. Oh! That's actually a really good force field. The problem is he doesn't have a lot of units behind this, and the Zealots are walking into the Hydralisk, so Hero losing his control here for just a little bit, but this is because he's pushing in the middle of the map, cleaning up these creep tumors, trying to catch what he can. Two queens with a lot of energy are about to go down, unless Cheryl pulls them back right now. Nope, they're, they're gone. So is that Roach. Bye-bye. And Cyril, by the way, did fully 
we uh, withdraw his army to deal with this. Another Hydralis does go down, and Hero's getting some pretty good damage for these just Zealot mineral-based units. War Prism doesn't cost any gas. Zealots don't cost any gas. I think two sentries were warped in, but that's about it. Overlords in the middle of the map do need to be withdrawn as well. Last thing you want to do is the Zerg players get supply blocked in the middle of the game like this, but uh, of course that's not really on his mind right now. Giving chase to the Stalkers in the middle of the map. Hero does not have uh, too many, which is kind of scary, but he doesn't blink, so he retains enough of them. Lower right base was taken while this is happening, so Sarah will now happily on four hatcheries. We may even see a macro hatchery come down here soon, too. Does it have Vipers out? Mm, I think the Vipers get a pretty limited use, though. I mean, there are Colossus on the way, but there's only one, two now for the time being. I think... Oh my god, sir, I can't wake up this morning. I definitely got enough sleep, I don't know what's up. Anyways, I think the uh, War Prism is a really nice move out of Hero. It's going to be costly if he loses it. There's some very precious cargo in here, so just back up immediately. Man, I just the attack so fast, but uh, might be able to catch it with the other ones in the middle of the map. Yeah, if you went up here, you would have been able to. A little, a little sad that it did not happen. But yeah, the Vipers took that layer down to half. That's actually a little bit scary to consider, too, but... Uh, combination blinding clouds and abducts are going to be fantastic here. This is some really awful position to try and maneuver around. He still has creep. I don't know how or why, but Star Slam does have a couple of creep tumors here and there in the middle of the map. Uh, pause break for the moment. Hopefully, not having too much lagger issues. His screen freezed. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what this means. We may have to resume from replay. I've had this happen before too. What you can do though is hit control, delete, and sometimes that'll unfreeze it. Just that window prompt will refresh your your screen, but I don't know if that's the same same issue he's having at the moment. Because I know there's been a couple times where I've been casting with zombie grab, and I'll be like, "Whoa, is your game still working?" And like I can hear the sounds and I can hear the units, but my screen does not move. Uh, well, let's take a quick drink. Uh, so yeah, this is a bit odd, a bit awkward. Uh, well, we'll see what happens here. Uh, someone was calling me out on my first blood too, by the way. Um, the Zealot did not actually kill that very first Ling. It takes three shots to kill a Ling. If you notice, it only swiped it twice and it ran past. And that Ling was the first one to die into the Mothership core. Unless I'm totally wrong, but I think that's what ended up happening. Either way, fuck you. <laughs> Alright, hopefully, it uh, looks like Sarah may have, may have resolved things. Fingers are crossed. Alright, he says it's fixed. Game okay, back in action. No need for a replay, resume, or anything like that. <laughs> Rifkin is the resident sleeper. I wish. Okay, so while the Colossus are being held back, these Blink Stalkers are, yeah, not going to get in any trouble for the time being. The Infestor is coming out. I believe a couple just hatched, actually. There we go. So some Fungals not quite available as he did not go for the Pathogen Glands. Not sure if this is a mistake or an accident, but... Uh, it's gonna be an accident as he sacrifices them all on the other side of the map. What was that? Uh, this was problematic too because he was tentative to engage. He wanted to send his forces back home, but he didn't want to send all of his forces back home. So his army was out of position for that. Infestors left exposed, and you really you need fungals to stop blink stalkers. Is the bottom line. You can try and engage them head on, but whether it's a complete disengage or a couple stalkers have blinked out one at a time. Uh, he just, it, life is better with a fungal. A couple of hallucinations in the mix, but he does manage to get the real Colossus. Gonna back away immediately. He's got, uh, I'd say a couple more abducts in this one Viper. He could also put down some blinding clouds instead if he wants to, but not a bad start for that engagement. If he hadn't lost the Vipers, that would have actually been pretty freaking sweet. Ah, uh, but another base being taken from Sarah while this is happening. And, well... Some awkward roaches are down here. 
Ooh, Pro and Tunneling Claws coming up in the late game is a bit cute. Uh, oftentimes there are observers as we see with the army, but not a lot, and the map won't have a lot of cannons on it just yet. There are some cannons granted, but the other thing Tunneling Claws does is it enhances the regeneration of roaches by quite a significant amount, not just the uh, the capability to move while burrowed. And his crew's pretty much dissipated, which is a little bit unfortunate. Hydras were left in a great spot to snipe off that war prism, and now Cyril. Well, he's looking to go for an attack. Unfortunately, there's Blink Stalkers here to catch him. They do Blink forward, and he's got to stay away from these force fields. A lot of Guardian Shields and a lot of ways to shut his units down in a tight choke like this. Out in the open is the best way for him to try and take a fight, or out in the open, depending on your point of view there, eh? But Blind Cloud's going to come down on top of this Blink Stalkers initially. There's some Colossus coming from every angle, though. It's almost like he's warping in Colossus. Just <laughs> surprise! But a gold base being taken too, so even if he loses his position here in the south, as long as he doesn't lose his entire army, he'll still be ready to fight. A probe is putting a pylon down on the front lines for warpins. A Mutalisk Remax is coming behind this, but if we're going to be quite honest, the Mutalisk Remax isn't that scary. Double stargates are made immediately. He's ready for this. And Cyril sent packing once again. He's going to lose not one but two bases, and on top of this, a lot of drones are going to die as well. Fleet beacons have been made immediately for that, uh, that Anion Pulse Crystal upgrade to deal with these Mutas. But I don't think Cyril can necessarily force a base trade in this scenario. He doesn't have the DPS to match that of his opponent. His army supply is still pretty darn good, but uh, he's got to stop those Stargates right now. That's a lot of cannons coming down. This is a hard choice to make. Trying to figure out what to focus on. Uh, let's not forget some Blinding Clouds could go down top of these as well if he really wants to nullify damage. But as the cannons are taken out, the Beatles actually start getting a little out of control. Again, I don't know if he's got the, the DPS to straight up win a base race or not. But what he does need to do is start focusing these mutas. Get up on an attack, move command while the hydras move into the natural. Meanwhile, back at home, this lair, this hive is about to go down. Not looking too good here for our My Insanity player. Cyril just bleeding it all over the place. Trying to get the last couple of mutalisks he can. Uh, there's an extractor down here to the south. There's an overlord over here, but he needs to sneak some units out. He needs to, uh, he needs to possibly be able to evacuate, jump ship, and build something else so he doesn't lose. Actually, I take that back. A hatchery is thrown down in the very awkward spot down here to the bottom left. Mutals on top of the Stargates, though, do mean no phoenixes are coming out, but some, again, focus fire on top of these might be his best bets, making sure that they never get out, never to see the light of day. Gonna focus on the fleet peak, but any curls, pulse crystals isn't coming out. I think Hero's gonna be relying pretty much on blink stalkers, maybe a couple archons here and there if you can morph them in. But uh, si uh, sadly and ironically enough, these Colossus here are probably the most useless things in this composition at the moment. And he will just throw these away to try and clean up buildings a little bit faster, a little bit quicker. 27 Mutalisks, though, is the current count for a Zerg player. Uh, soon to be 28. Ooh, drones are being evacuated somewhere. Somewhere a stand. I have no idea where that is though. Uh, he has been super supply blocked with knowing this why hero doesn't have any new production coming in. War Prison was made, but that's going to go down here very quickly. And Cyril. Oh, he keeps grouping up, and I just can't help but think, like, what if there was an Archon? A uh, Storm does go down, but as we see, Storms don't last too long. That is a hell of a lot of cannons. <laughs> Holy schmoly. Uh, blind Clouds do come down, though, and this will keep them from doing a lot of damage, if any. Storms once again going down on top of the Mutalists. They are starting to get a little bit low. He's got to be careful before he loses all of these to Storms. If there's one thing you should never lose your Mutalists to, it's Storm above all else. But he's going to retreat backwards. These are really low. Blink Stalkers could certainly engage into this. Uh, unfortunately, the Vipers did go down, and there's still more Storms on the other side of the map, but let's not forget, he can always merge in some Archons if necessary. But having killed the Fleet Beacon and never cleaned up these Stargates, three Phoenixes at a time begin. And Liquid Hero's position in this game looks better and better. Serral, who could normally otherwise do this with maybe Mutalists, will not be afforded the opportunity once those Phoenix come out. Three or four? Maybe. But if those go up to six, seven, ten, twelve, that's gonna be game. Serral has a 2,500 mineral bank, and he can only make six lings at a time. He's got no queens, he's got no tech, he's got no ability to really do anything, and uh, not enough of those cannons died. He can't even dive back in here, sadly. And let's not forget the storms. Round two, four storms ready to go. Tries to dive past the first one, not splitting on the second. Phoenixes are revealed, more storms are being slapped down. These mutalists are so incredibly low. Now, the Hydralis will actually help zone out against the Phoenix a little bit, but you know what? These storms are good against those as well. <laughs> this is, I think, Hero's Game GG is called. Ladies and gentlemen, Liquid Hero will take game number two, solidifying the lead for Team Liquid now, 2-0, to oh, but also putting him on a two-win streak. Now, what this means, more importantly, is if he loses the next game, then it's only the two-win streak. If he wins the next game, then it's a three-win streak, and we carry on, so forth and so forth. Uh, 